I just have a lot to say. I like that Kashta, what, what Kashta just said about how Tariq made 1804, but now in 2022, he's now telling people, don't go watch the, the ancestors of the people who created 1804. Like, don't go watch the Dahomey, even though the Haitians are connected to the Dahomey, but it is what it is. But the, I have a lot. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What I don't like is how, okay, people are talking about the role that the Dahomey played in the slave trade, but what you said earlier, I don't know why people are allowing the Oyo and the Yoruba to escape out the back door. But like you said, a lot of these people, they're Google scholars. They're Wikipedia scholars. You know, they just learned about the Dahomey in the last 72 hours. Right. You know, so so a lot of these people, they triggered. But like, bro, it's the, the ignorance is insane. And I also have a problem with a lot of these, you know, these Manosphirian dudes that are triggered by seeing women in a role of position, in a, in a role of power. But like you said, it wasn't a case of the women being above the men in fact these dudes always complain about black women not being loyal not being submissive they don't listen and now you got a group of black women willing to fight and die for black men and now these dudes got their panties in a bunch but like dude, you said dude but like dude, you said you should all take your wives to see that movie and be like babe this is how i want you to act for me because they was acting like some real soldiers but sorry about that go ahead Nah, it's no problem bro and I noticed that the majority of the the detractors are coming from people with um, American flags in their bio, you know, the FBA ADOS crowd. And it's ironic to me because I think the Dahomey majority of their enemies were sold to Brazil, but I don't see any Brazilian flags, you know, complaining and bitching and moaning, but it's only the Americans. And it's ironic also because- Hey, hey, he hey, but the Brazilian stuff is in there too. They, they work, the yeah. Brazil, yep, they put the right. Brazilian shit in there. Right. And a lot of these people are saying, you know, the Dahomey sold my ancestors. They sold me, you know, you know, the, the victimhood is on a hundred right now, but they don't know that a, a, a decent amount of Dahomey citizens were also transported to North America. So they might have lineage that traces back to that region in Benin and they might be descendants of the, the Dahomey, but because the victimhood is on a hundred percent. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No problem, bro. Because the victimhood is on a hundred percent, you might actually have descendants of the Dahomey that are actually trying to say that they were sold into slavery by the Dahomey, you know? And it's just, you know, I don't know, bro. It's this Tariq, he's pushing this nonsense. But like you said, he works for he works for the enemy to push people in the position of victimhood. And what Alan HB said, I have a problem. He said they were slaughtering black people. That's why he was triggered by it. Well, I have to say this to, to Alan and anybody who feels the same. If you're holding ancient African kingdoms to a standard of morality that you do not hold the other empires the french empire the british empire or the american armed forces who a lot of our brothers you know they, they combat veterans in the american army but they don't ever hold the american government to no moral standard when they grab that gun and go shoot you know civilians in foreign countries so it is what it is bro um Matt, you know and you're totally right like we, the white man did more to black people than anybody but we can set our differences aside with him and appreciate his history and his art and his food and go to his country oh i want to go see england and greece and shit but it's our oh no and and let me tell you something the dahomey amazons were soldiers they didn't go slaughtering villagers soldiers fight against soldiers guys and they took the villagers as slaves so you know they wasn't just going there let's slaughter a bunch of innocent they fought soldiers and they got their ass whooped too. This is my whole thing. If you're just going in as a slaver, and then when you got to fight against an equal or greater force, you run away, I understand that. But his, history shows us the Dahomey, that was not them. They fought against the French in what they knew was a losing battle. That's actually how they got wiped out. Right. So, right. so they, they showed up. They were soldiers. And what do soldiers now? Just following orders, boss. So you're going right. to hold them. Cause so so black people, what we're supposed to have is an army that don't even listen to the king. Hey, Mr. King, we don't think this is right. So we just not going to do it. This is why you have no power now. Now, what you just heard was a guest appearance that I made on the YouTube show, Pan-Africanism Strikes Back. And we were just discussing the Woman King movie. Of course, we were discussing the reaction that was happening on social media, the hypocrisy from certain groups of people who seven days ago didn't even know who the Dahomey Kingdom was, what was going on there or anything about them. You know, I like to call them Google scholars and Wikipedia scholars, but these same people, they'll glorify their grandfather that put on the uniform of the United States Army and fought in World War II. Oh, we fought in every war since the Civil War, you know? These dudes love to glorify the American Armed Forces, but then want to give you morality speeches surrounding African militaries and African kingdoms that existed 300 years ago. And these same detractors of the Woman King movie, the Dahomey Kingdom, 
They'll glorify ancient Egypt. They'll glorify the ancient Nubians. They'll glorify the Mali Empire. They'll glorify the Zulu Empire. They'll glorify the Kanembu. They'll glorify the Songhai. They'll glorify all the legendary West African kingdoms, Southern African kingdoms, East African kingdoms. But at the same time, they'll draw the line at Dahomey. Now, one thing we have to understand is the reason why the Dahomey is so famous is because Europeans have extensive written accounts because they've spent a lot of time in that region and they were writing down a lot of what they seen and a lot of what they heard. If they were spending time perhaps in the Ashanti region, they would have probably had extensive written documents for them and which they do. But the Dahomey has extensive um, written accounts from Europeans and that is why they have the reputation that they have. But what they did was no different than what every other nation was doing during that time. You had the French fighting the British, you had the Spanish fighting the French, you had the Americans fighting the British, you had the Americans fighting the French, you had Shaka Zulu running all through South Africa. You had the ancient Egyptians long time ago fighting all type of wars. The ancient Nubians fighting all type of wars. You had the Mali and the Songhai fighting all type of wars. You had, man, it was just, it is what it is. That's life, that's politics, and that's how it goes, right? But we want to draw the line at the Dahomey Kingdom. But God forbid I stand up and I say, I don't respect no man or woman who served in the United States Armed Forces. But then I'm going to be seen as the bad guy because I'm disrespecting their precious nation and their precious army, right? But then they want to disrespect African militaries from 300 years ago holding them to high moral standards that they'll never hold their own governments and their own relatives that serve in the American government and serve in the American army, right? So me, I just don't like the hypocrisy of it all, right? Because me, I don't look through the lens of history through a moral lens, through a historical lens where people are sitting around a campfire holding hands, eating marshmallows. You know, I know what it is, bro. I know what it is because I come from a stock of people where the battlefield is in our blood. You know what I mean? I'm Haitian, bro. We don't fought wars against multiple European nations and we don't fought wars against blacks. Yes, the Dominicans, if you want to count them as blacks. Yes, we fought battles against blacks and whites. So the whole fighting against someone that looks like you thing, I don't get triggered by that. I don't get triggered by that because I also understand the historical context. I understand that the Dahomey was at war with rival factions, rival nations that were surrounding them that were also slave raiding nations that were attacking them and transported them into the new world, human trafficked them, sold them into slavery by the millions. So when they decided enough was enough and they were gonna ride down on the enemies, I can understand that. I can understand the mindset of a Dahomey man or a Dahomey woman living in the year 1724 who your mothers and your fathers and your cousins and your granddaddy them been sold into slavery, them been sold to Hispaniola, them been sold to Santo Domingo, them been sold to Trinidad. I can understand the mindset where you say enough is enough. You pick up your sword, you pick up your machete, you pick up your shotgun and you ride down on your enemies. I can understand that. I can understand after the Oyo Empire then sold generations upon generations of my people into slavery and I'm not gonna get revenge? I'm not gonna come back and ride down on them? Are you insane? But like I said, we have a sector of our community that can't really relate to that mindset, that warrior mindset, where you defend yours, you defend your territory, you defend your own, right? They can't really understand that, right? Because in their mind, like I said before in my previous video, it's that white Jesus indoctrination. You know, you slap me across my face, I turn the other cheek, let you slap me across again, and then I just, you know, peacefully protest, or I just, you know, pray to God about it, or I just, you know, go to church about it, or I just pray you change, and I just hope that you become a better person, but I'll never ever take up arms. You know, there's a certain group of people that can't relate to the act of taking up arms for anything they believe in. They won't take up arms for their family they won't take up arms for their community they won't take up arms for themselves right so when they see a group of people taking up arms and riding down on their enemies it doesn't really compute in their mind right it doesn't really make sense in their mind they say things like oh why are you doing that to your own people because they don't understand the historical context they don't even have the same respect for african nations that they do for european nations you ever notice that when people talk about european history we specify we say the french we say the british we say the russians we say the germans but when it comes to african history History, we don't really specify that we don't really say okay the Zulu we don't say the Kanembu we don't say the the Congo people we don't say the Kikuyu we just say quote-unquote the Africans so when you look at history through the lens of okay the Europeans get the respect of individuality we respect their nation-states and their separation and their ethnic identity but when you just label everything down to quote unquote the africans well then every time you study history and you see this nation state going to war against this nation state in your mind you're going to compute it as wow why are africans doing this to their own people but like i said in the previous video the Haitians and the Dominicans, they went to war over multiple decades, but nobody says, at least not us on our island, we don't say we were fighting our own people. Haitians and Dominicans clearly look at each other as different people, even though they're on the same landmass, and it was no different back in Africa, right? But Africans, pre-colonial Africans, do not get that same respect. They just get called the Africans, right? Even though it was literally thousands upon thousands of little 
tribes and nations, right? So when you see a Dahomey man sells his enemy to the European, they just say the Africans sold the Africans, right? He doesn't get the respect of, no, I'm a Dahomey man. I'm from over here. My ancestors are from here. We have this spiritual orientation. We do this. This is the food we plant. This is the food we eat. This is the dances we dance. These are what our women look like, etc., etc. I'm an Oyo man. I do this. I do that. Blah, 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 right? No, you just get called the Africans. you just the Africans. And if you fight amongst each other, then it's the Africans fighting their Africans. You know what I mean? So this is the ignorance that is perpetuated when you sit in these classrooms under a Western European curriculum where you are just taught everything positive from the European worldview and the African African worldview is kind of discarded and pretty much ignored and that's why you have a lot of these people that are grown people you know people in their 30s and their 40s that are just now learning about the Dahomey Empire in the last 72 hours like I said so unfortunately because you guys are just you know have a very low intelligence and very low research on history you know you guys are just walking around embarrassing yourself right embarrassing yourself for real because a Frenchman is never going to be ashamed of anything his ancestors did, right? I've never met a Frenchman that apologized to me or felt any type of shame for what his ancestors did to mine or what his ancestors might have did to the ancestors of a Britishman or an American, right? They don't feel no shame for that. They don't say, oh, we fought our own people. We shot our own people. We assassinated our own people. No, they say, I'm a Frenchman and that's a Britishman. That's an American. And we are individuals with our own identity. And that's what it is. Everybody respects it, right? But when it's the African, it's just, oh, it's just some Africans over there. They don't get that same respect. So unfortunately, you know, that's why you have the common phrase of Africans sold their own people. If he's my enemy, and we've been going to war for like the past 75 years. How did he become my people in the revisionist history centuries later? So listen, man, we got to actually do some real research, sit under some scholars, sit under some lectures, travel to these countries and interact with the people and get on the ground and really learn real information. Stop being a Google scholar. Stop being a YouTube scholar. And like I said, if you got a problem with the Dahomey Empire, you got to throw every single African nation away because they all then engaged in some type of military battle some type of war amongst each other some type of conquest amongst each other either by a victim or by predator etc etc sometimes the victim becomes the predator it is what it is right so we can't really throw our ancestors away because the europeans not gonna throw his ancestors away you know these white boys not gonna throw george washington away you know they're not gonna throw thomas jefferson away so it is what it is bro and i just want y'all to remain consistent if y'all got a problem with the dahomey empire then you also have a problem with the haitian revolution because the general the first head of state of haiti who abolished slavery in the Western Hemisphere was a Dahomey man by the name of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. And he was raised by a Dahomey woman by the name of Adabaya Toya. And the Haitian army, about one-fifth, was Dahomey women from the Dahomey Empire. Yes, those same warriors that y'all say was the murderous slave traders, about one-fifth of the Haitian army was Dahomey women. So at the end of the day, that just goes to show you guys' ignorance about history and the historical account. So it is what it is, man. It's your boy Nefakari Dessalines back in the building. Yes, indeed. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came at the famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, sh now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shoot. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. Know they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art. And they can never be taught Selling my soul I can never be bought Play all my money I see you ain't caught Run to the check And I do it for sport Babylon falling I go to the source Packing my luggage And go overseas Shorty be with me And she so at least Shorty be chugged And I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence Probably gon' murder me Don't fuck with brands Cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit And you're smacking their faces